Type New Zealand land mammals into Mr. Google and the answer is the same. Just bats. And even then, one of the three known bat species slipped off the peg in the 1960s, succumbing to rats on their last outcrop off Stewart Island. What does the Department of Conservation have to say on mammals? They are wrong. Had you been roaming central Otago a mere 20 million years ago, when New Zealand was an unidentifiable landmass with weather like Northern Territories, you would have bumped in to this wee fella. Because you're such a good subscriber, I've let you hit a gawk early on in the piece. Right away I'd like to thank the Canopy Museum for the majority of the content you see before you. Finding this little bleeder from the tons of material they painstakingly sifted through. And before I get any further with my dissertation, I better set the rules as to the loose usage of the term mammals. I'm talking indigenous and terrestrial. Opossums, deer, whales and seals all don't fit the bill. The narrative New Zealand has only one ever indigenous land mammal was rewritten in 1978 when the bones and teeth from two creatures of the same species were dug up in central Otago. St. Bathans to be exact. Yep, a place with the cool pub which allegedly has a ghost. Only the night I stayed in the haunted room I must have been too pissed to notice. It also has a lake called the Blue Lake formed from gold mining sluicing operations 150 years ago. The bones of the St. Bathans mammal were found in the remains of a giant extinct lake that was there 20 million years ago, give or take a million or two. All those years ago, that lake was the equivalent of five taupos put together. In comparison, the modern lake, well, I've swum the length of that. Millennia ago, St. Bathans Lake looked more like a swamp than the modern lakes we see today. Take it in for a second. The freshwater lake was home to an array of creatures, mostly now all extinct. Huge bats that scuttled around on the ground and lived in burrows. Two types of crocodiles that grew to about three metres. A giant turtle, similar to the ones on the Galapagos Islands. Snakes. Yes, New Zealand had snakes as well. An abundance of avian life. Flamingos, ducks geese, pigeons, doves, rails, parrots, swans, etc, etc. All of these were in or around Lake St. Bathans. The map of Zelanda was slightly different than the one you're used to. Unless of course you've overdosed on Reddit's Maps Without New Zealand. Notice I said Zealandia rather than New Zealand. And take a gaze. The blue bit being the lake. And there's still a big chunk to pop its head up over the waves. And the debate is no longer whether New Zealand had a second mammal, just exactly what it was. And this hasn't been helped by the fact there's not a lot to go by in terms of bones. The scientists only have jaw bones, teeth and a femur to stitch something together. Best guess, 
and the creature was a subclass of mammals called Theriform. According to my spell check, a word spelt T-H-E-I-I-L-F-O-R-M doesn't exist. Although giant ant eaters certainly do, and they are part of that subclass. Anyway, moving on, I better leave all the complicated stuff to the zoologists. All around, there's a hell of a lot of best guesses with this one. The creature could be considered a work in progress. Such a pity DNA is only retrievable for 40,000 years. So how big was it likely to have been? Modern day stoat size. What did it eat? And the teeth we have to work on are not specialised. But with it being the size it is, or was, it's highly likely it ate insects and ground-dwelling animals like worms, as well as munching on vegetation. And this combination likely kept his or her puku full. This is probably a fitting time to introduce a second rendition of what the St. Bathans mammal was supposed to look like. A mini variant of an Australian phylocene. Not something to wear jandals around. I can't see this. It's a bit too much of a poetic license here. The known facts indicate the less fearsome mouse-like caricature you saw previously is closer to the money. What about relatives, dead or alive? No idea. And the bones? Where are they now? Well, they're in Australia, at least when the video came out. With the ancient mammal experts at the University of New South Wales. Who knows? They may shortly fill in some of the Atlantic Ocean size gaps. Give the creature a specific name as opposed to the bland generic one. As is also possible, they won't be able to add much to what we already know, given the lack of material. That additional information may only happen with more digging in the area, the discovery of more remains. Just 10 to 20 metres below the central Otago surface are doubtless more pieces to add to the dig shore. Given the diversity of life at the lake, more digging could also produce another mammalian animal or two. Which would really put to rest the outdated account of bats being the only land-based mammals to frequent our fair land. I'd like to repeat the special thanks to Canterbury Museum with this one, along with Flinders University in Australia. They are the ones doing the painstaking digging here. Awesome job. And if cool Kiwi animals is your thing, what about this awesome creature? The Black Ghost Shark. There's a link to a video I've done on that below. Thanks for your time today. Spot you around next time for more interesting things from NZ.